to declare your faithful love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you have made me rejoice, Lord, by what you have done. I will shout for joy because of the works of your hands. How magnificent are your works, Lord, and how profound your thoughts. Let's worship together. Sunday morning. We're excited to be here in the Lord's house. Uh, just a few quick announcements uh, this morning. Uh, right after the morning service, we will be having our uh, a business meeting uh, for our service. Uh, so we went to have and hold our business meeting on uh, Wednesday, uh, which is normally our business meeting time, but we did not have enough members. So right after the church service, we're going to have a business meeting very briefly to go through uh, last month's uh, statements and stuff. And then uh, right after that, we're going to have our deacon nomination. And that is going to be, again, right after the morning service, uh, we will have pass out slips. Uh, and then you can nominate uh, two gentlemen uh, to be eligible for the deacon here at Beverly Hills Baptist. We have two positions opening up. So if you will, write down two names of gentlemen that you would uh, uh, think that would be worthy to be deacons here. Also, uh, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to write those out and drop those in the offering plate. We are updating our prayer list. Uh, we're sending that out by email. Uh, and so if you uh, would like to receive a copy of that, please let us know. And we'll get you a copy of the updated prayer list. And also, thank you for your continued financial support. We are uh, still getting uh, some tithes and offerings through the mail. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we just praise the Lord that we were able to meet. Uh, I pray that everybody has had a wonderful week. Uh, if you would, uh, just kind of stand where you're at, wave with one another, uh, bump elbows if you would like, uh, but at this time, let's just stand and greet one another.
this time we will uh, have a time of prayer. Uh, again, if you have any prayer requests or any names uh, of those that uh, you would like to add to the prayer list, please fill out a card or please let us know here at the church. We will update our prayer list. Um, just continue to remember in prayer uh, Steve Solomon as he is uh, working for recovery. Also, Deborah Moore. Uh, I was able to go by her house the other day and, and spend just a few minutes talking with her, and she is in very high spirits and seems to be doing well. Uh, so continue to pray for her. Uh, and continue to pray for one another here at Beverly Hills. We are still working through this struggle through the pandemic. Um, and we pray that the Lord will just continue to move in a mighty way using us uh, for the outreach of the kingdom. Uh, and uh, continue to pray for your country and your nation and just uh, everything that's going on. Uh, the only way to achieve peace in this world is going to be the peace through Jesus Christ. And so we need to continue to pray that his name will be lifted up. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, and we pray for those, Father, that are on our prayer list, for all the names that we have added, those names that uh, are on there for whatever reason it may be, whether it is sickness, illness, uh, whether it is just uh, financial struggles, uh, those who are homebound. Lord, there are so many names, but you know each and individual person, and you know every circumstance that they are in. And so, Father, we pray for those names on our prayer list. For whatever reason it may be, we lift them up to you. And we pray that you would work in a mighty way, whether it is the comforting Father or the divine physician or whatever the role may be of whoever needs, we pray that you would move in a mighty way. We pray, Father, for those all around us. We pray for the lost that are in our county in our nation, uh, state, uh, and even the world around us. We pray, Father, for those who do not know you as Lord and Savior. The only way to uh, overcome the struggles and the worries, the fears, the doubts of everything that's going on in this world is to have the peace of Jesus Christ. And we pray for that peace. We pray, Father, for our uh, military, police, fire, EMS, and those who are continually going in harm's way to keep us safe. We pray, Father God, that you would watch over them, keep them safe, laying your hands of protection upon them. Father, we pray for our church as we come upon uh, important decisions to be made. Father, as our denomination takes place this morning, we pray that you would be in control of the things that take place, that the names that will be placed. We pray that you would use those men uh, who will be uh, elected in as deacons to be used mightily here at Beverly Hills for the further of the gospel. And Father, I pray, my hope and my prayer is for a resurgence of the gospel. I pray for another great awakening. I pray, Father, that this nation and the world around will turn to you, that they will seek you in all things, and knowing that the only way to overcome the hatred and the struggles and, the, and, and everything that we are facing here is to have the peace of Jesus. And so I pray, oh Lord, I pray that you would move in a mighty way, making your presence known, working in the hearts of minds. And I pray, Father, that you would be honored and glorified. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand once again and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. He sure is faithful, isn't he? His steadfast love never changes.
you'll turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Psalm 61. Psalm 61. My question for you this morning is this. Have you ever felt sorrow? Have you ever felt sorrow? Uh, as we have been preaching through uh, the Psalms on Sunday mornings, I've noticed that there is a pattern within a few of them that I've preached that I have deemed uh, what I call the Struggle with Emotions series. And in this, we get to part six in dealing with sorrow. Have you ever felt sorrow? Um, I have experienced sorrow in my lifetime. Uh, I, I take it beyond of being sad to having extreme sadness. Uh, I have exp uh, experienced sorrow probably just as much as uh, many people have. Um, I have dealt with the loss of a loved one. I remember when my grandfather passed away, the first funeral I ever performed was that of my grandfather. Uh, I remember when my grandmother passed away when I was a young boy. Uh, I, I have dealt with sorrow uh, in, in many different levels. One of the things that I felt most sorrowful and, and most heartbroken was when my youngest daughter was bitten by a dog. Now, if you look at the grand perspective of things, you think well, losing a loved one is extremely sorrowful. That, that's very heartbreaking. Um, and compared to, well, let's say, just a minor dog bite or a dog attack, might not be as big as it would for losing a loved one. But I think the greatest sorrow come out of that because it happened to my child. And I think when we begin to look over all the things that we have experienced in life, when we deal with emotions, we as humans have dealt with a myriad of emotions. Sorrow, sadness, anxiety, fear, worry, doubt. How many of you have experienced just one of those this week? How about more than just one? When I think about all the things that I've experienced in my life, when it comes down to dealing with my children, I think it ends up being magnified. And I think a lot of people would say that just the same, that if something happens to them, that can be considered hard, struggling. But when it happens to a child, especially their child, things begin to take a different perspective. When we get into Psalm 61, we begin to see a hymn, a psalm of sorrow that pours out of the heart of King David over the sorrow that he experiences with his son, Absalom. Psalms 61, beginning in verse 1, the first thing we see is the request from David's sorrow. The request from David's sorrow. David writes... Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Psalm 61 has been dedicated as a hymn of sorrow or sadness. It was a hymn that was written by David in the time that he dealt with the struggles of his son Absalom. Now, to understand the sorrow that has taken place, I want to take a trip into Hebrew history. Uh, in the Old Testament, David marries and he has many wives and he has a lot of children. The most well-known of David's sons is King Solomon, who wrote the book of Solomon and a lot of Proverbs. But David, uh, Solomon was not David's first child. David's first child was uh, uh, Taman and his third child was Absalom. Now, there has been a lot of struggle that took place within David's kingdom, and especially David's heirs. Uh, the first and the oldest son had a lot of issues uh, that ended up causing a family rift. Because of this family rift, and because of the, the sin that was committed by the firstborn son, uh, Absalom, which was David's third son, took revenge for his family and murdered his older brother. 
When he did such a thing, this created a gigantic tear in the David dynasty. Absalom then begins to run for his life and he goes and hides. In a period of time as Absalom is hidden away and David is wanting him to return, Absalom returns with a great army, an army that is even in fact just as big as King David. Absalom wanting to take the throne from his father and take over because he does not agree with the rule of King David. But in this time as Absalom begins to build his army, David begins to build his. And at one point in Hebrew history, there comes a time where father and son will clash and wars will begin to be fought and a great battle takes place. Now, David had told his generals and his men that if you capture Absalom, do not kill him. Do not take his life. Uh, as this war ensues, uh, Absalom's uh, uh, army begins to be defeated and Absalom flees for his life. And in fleeing, as he is running under an oak tree, he is caught by the hair on his head and is suspended uh, by this tree without any support. When David's general comes upon uh, Absalom in a tree, uh, this general begins to remember when Absalom did him wrong. And Absalom's life is taken by this general as he kills Absalom with a spear. And then Absalom is then in a horrific manner stabbed many a times by a spear as his life is taken. When David hears the news that his son has been murdered, he breaks out in overwhelming sorrow. Sorrow that is so deep that it breaks the heart and soul to hear the words come out from David. And he cries out, oh Absalom, oh Absalom, my son Absalom. David is heartbroken over the death of his son. From that heartbrokenness comes Psalm 61. And as the request of David's sorrow, he cries out to God for a request in his agony. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayers. David cries out, Please hear me, Lord. He says, From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. David cries out, God, in my sorrow I pray that you will hear me. I pray that you will hear the words that I speak. From the ends of the earth I call to you because my heart is faint. I, I can only imagine as a father who has lost a child, as a husband who is dealing with this with his wife, as, as, as David is struggling with the loss of a child, it, it feels like that his life has been stretched to the ends of the earth. If you've ever uh, felt extreme sorrow, if you've ever uh, dealt with the loss of a loved one, or whatever the case may be, you can feel like you are teetering on the edge of life. You can feel like this earth is at its end. And the only thing that David can do is he can cry out to God and he says, Lord, pick me up. David says, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. When you feel extreme sorrow, you can feel like you are rock bottom. You feel like there is no place to go and you cannot go any lower. David concludes here by saying, you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. David understands that his only strength can be found in God. If you've ever experienced extreme sorrow, if you've ever felt extreme sadness, you, can, you feel as if though you have no strength. Your muscles become weak. Your bones feel like they're going to break. And you feel like there is no place to go. There is no place to go. And the only place that you can go is to go up. David understands the only way to overcome that is through God. And he cries out, hear me and listen to my prayers. Not only do we see the request of David's sorrow, but the realization from David's sorrow David writes, let me dwell in your tent forever and let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. There is a realization that David understands from his sorrow. 
when sorrow begins to hit, you begin to understand that there is a realization of what is taking place. David here cries out, let me to dwell in your tent forever. David was probably, if not the most mightiest person at this time. David was the king of the United Armies. He was the king of the United Nations, as you would call it. It would not be until later that there, uh, these 12 tribes would then be broken down into the northern kingdom, into the southern kingdom. But at this moment, David is the most important person in the kingdomhood. Yes, David relies on his uh, fellow prophets and he relies on those that uh, lead and guide him through the biblical wisdom. But yet, as being the king, he is on top of the world. David has an unimaginable fortune. He has uh, loves of his life. He has multiple wives. He has many children. And yet, at this moment, the only thing David wants is to live in the presence of God. He does not want to be king. He does not want to be wealthy. He does not want to have multiple children at this time. Whatever it is, because the sorrow is so great, the only thing he wants to do is live in the tents of God forever. He says, let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings, Selah. As it is written here, David uses the analogy of a bird. Uh, the bird, how a mother, uh, for instance, a mother bird will lay her wings over her uh, chicks and keep them safe. Uh, we have a plant, uh, especially a fern that is growing on our front porch. And uh, Charity went to water it a couple of days ago and a bird flew out and it scared her, scared everybody. And we pulled it down and sure enough, there were baby chicks in there. Uh, I grew up on a chicken farm, and I have seen uh, chicks uh, being raised with their mother. And, and it is uh, beautiful to see how the mother will wrap her wings around and keep these chicks safe. David uses this analogy to explain that, look, where I'm at right now is not where I want to be. I just want to be with you, O oh Lord. The realization of the sorrow has taken place within David's heart. He begins to feel the agony, the weight pushing down, and all he wants is to be just with God. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Even David explains that he has a right in the kingdom of heaven, that he, being a child of the king, has a place within that. His heritage will be with the Lord, and that's where he wants to be. When you experience extreme sorrow, you can only imagine how painful it may be that you just want everything to stop. You just want everything to end. Everything that's going on around you doesn't matter anymore. When you are faced with extreme sorrow, your job doesn't matter. When you or if faced with extreme sorrow, your mortgage payment doesn't make a difference. The only thing you want is relief from that sorrow. David understands that that only comes from being in Christ, from being in God. Now there is a resolve that David will find from his sorrow. Here David continues, prolong the life of the king, may his years endure for all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. David has now a resolve that will come from this brokenheartedness, from this sorrow. Uh, sorrow may continue within our life, but there will be a time when you will be able to overcome it. There will be a time when this sorrow will pass. That doesn't mean you'll forget it. That doesn't mean that it won't be lingering in the back of your mind. But through God, you can conquer this sorrow. Here, David says, prolong the life of the king. Now, these are very bold words for a man just a few minutes ago who wanted to be just with God and everything else to pass. But David understands the importance of what God has called him to do. Not only as a king of the United Kingdom here, but as a king of all of the known world. David here wishes that the Lord will prolong him that he may be of better use here on the kingdom. Prolong the life of the king. May his years uh, to endure all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God appointed steadfast and love faithfulness to watch over him. 
David prays that as he is here on earth, as God is not finished with him, God will use him in a mighty, mighty way. And he prays that God, as I am continuing to be used by you, may you appoint love towards me, faithfulness, and watch over me. Lord, uh, grant me the strength to carry on, and as I do, may I use this to point others to you. And then lastly, David finally has the relief that he needs from this sorrow. David says, so will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. David here concludes with the words, so I will sing praises to your name. Just a man a few moments ago who was crying out at the bottom of the pit, who was in the greatest of despair. He turns and he looks at his heavenly father and says, I will sing praises to you. And as I perform my vows day after day, as I get up and I carry on being a king, I will carry on for your honor and your glory singing praises to you. Extreme sorrow may be with you at one moment, but at some time that will pass. Everything in this world is passing by. And as David explains, the only thing that will make the difference in the end is knowing God. Do you have a peace with God? Do you know God as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Him as a heavenly Father? Or does He seem like a distant being just out of arm's reach? In conclusion, I want you to understand this. The pain felt in this world will only be diminished by the peace of God. Let me say that one more time. The pain felt in this world will only be diminished by the peace of God. When I wrote this sermon and as I read through it, I began to have a picture in my mind as David wrote about the sorrow that he was experiencing. Some of you may know this, many of you may know this, but a few years back, I had a nephew who passed away from cancer. Right before Austin was 19 years old, he was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. For a year, he battled with cancer. Uh, at the age of 20, right before he was to turn 21, right out of year, Austin passed away. Now, as I look at Austin's life, Austin led more people to the Lord in his dying than he did in his living. Austin was a dedicated man to God. And for that, I thank God that he knew Jesus as his Lord and Savior. But as I began to read through this, and as I began to understand the heart of David, I can only imagine what my sister and her husband went through with the loss of their son. How the sorrow that they felt when Austin passed away, and what great agony that they experienced. And I can only imagine how William would begin to use this, that he would never forget the life of Austin. He would never forget who his son was. But he would use this to further advance the kingdom. He would use this sorrow to outreach to people and to tell them about Jesus. The pain felt in this world is absolutely real. But the only way for it to be diminished is by the peace of God. Do you have a peace within your heart that if you were to lose everyone in your life, and in including your own life, would you be at peace with God? That is the only way that we can ever overcome the sorrows that we face. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. We praise your holy name. And we thank you that we can have just a little glimpse into the life of David, into the heartbrokenness that he experienced with the death of Absalom. And Father God, we pray that you would move in a mighty way. I don't know what is going on in the hearts of those sitting in the congregation. I don't know what is going on in the hearts of those who are going to watch this online. But what I can tell you, Father, is that we all struggle with sorrow. We all struggle with sadness. And so, Father, I pray that you would begin to move into the hearts and to the minds of those who need you, who are broken, who are struggling, who are full of sorrow and grief. And I pray that you begin to bring a healing in their hearts and minds. 
I pray, Father God, that you would begin to lead us on a spiritual walk of healing from the struggles we have. Forgive us, Father, for where we've sinned against you. For we are all sinners. But, Father God, praise your name that we are children of the King. And I pray, I pray, Lord, that you would move and guide and direct us as your children to bring us back to you. And that no matter what we face, no matter how difficult or how strenuous, that we can have the faith and strength we need to stand before you. Father God, we love you and we praise you. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will stand with me as we have our invitation. If the Lord is speaking to your heart, listen as he speaks. Page 259. <laughs> praising your holy name. We thank you, Father, that we can gather here to sing songs in your honor, to your glory, hear the preaching of your word as you have spoken through us in the book of Psalms. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we go about our week. We pray, Father, that you would be honored and glorified as we reach out to those around us to simply tell everyone that Jesus loves them and that he died for them. Father God, give us strength for the weary road, leading us on the straight path towards you. Father, we praise your name, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 